Plot Summary of The Beautiful and Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald Anthony Patch hasn't done much since he graduated from Harvard except for a few small jobs. Anthony's grandfather, who raised him and keeps him in high society, has put pressure on him to write a book, or at least to say that he is writing a book. Anthony spends a lot more time worrying about having to write than he does writing. A lot of this fear happens in the tub of his luxurious bathroom, which he calls the pride of his apartment. Anthony's parents died when he was young, so he worries about death and the dangers of the world. He often goes to the toilet to get away from things. Dick Caramel, who was in Anthony's class at Harvard, introduces him to his cousin Gloria Gilbert. Gloria is a girl from high society. She spends her nights out on the town and uses her beauty to get men to pay for her drinks. Anthony is interested in how she seems to get by with just her looks. Even though it seems like a movie producer named Joseph Blokeman might be interested in her, Anthony starts dating Gloria. He soon finds out that she, like him, worries about how quickly her youth is passing. He can't stop thinking about her. Anthony finally gives in to his feelings for Gloria and proposes to her after failing to stay away from her. She says yes right away, turning Blokeman down. Before he and Gloria even get married, Anthony starts to have second thoughts. He knows that his fixed income is already stretched thin by his own lavish lifestyle, and now he will also have to pay for Gloria's social activities. He will also have to share the flat he has come to think of as his safe place. He ignores his worry by telling himself that everything will work out in the end. He thinks that one day, no matter how hard he works or how good he is at budgeting, he will find wealth and success by accident. Anthony always buys things he wants, like alcohol or expensive clothes. Gloria is something he wants, so he takes her. Anthony and Gloria's marriage starts to have problems before they even get back from their honeymoon. Anthony's fear of dying makes him drive too carefully, which Gloria thinks is weak. In the meantime, Gloria doesn't do the housework that Anthony wants her to do. At times, they talk about their future and the kids they might have with happiness, but these times don't last long. Back in New York, they still aren't happy with each other. Anthony rents Gloria a house in the country because he wants Gloria to stop asking for one. He doesn't want the house himself, he just wants Gloria to stop asking for one. Because he doesn't want to give up his favorite flat in the city, renting a house puts their money right on the edge. The couple doesn't plan to work to add to Anthony's fixed income or move to a smaller home as a way to deal with their uncertain finances. Instead, they try to get their minds off of their situation by throwing parties. The parties make it seem like Anthony and Gloria are part of a big group of friends, but in reality, the couple is growing apart from their friends, many of whom are starting to settle down and get jobs. Everything falls apart when Anthony's grandfather, who is a strong supporter of alcohol prohibition, shows up at the country house during one of the parties without being invited. Adam Patch cuts Anthony off from his inheritance because he doesn't like how much Anthony drinks. When Adam Patch dies soon after, it turns out that Anthony has been replaced as heir by his secretary, Shuttleworth. Anthony and Gloria can't imagine living any more modestly, so they soon start living off of bonds they've cashed in. Their marriage is very busy, with a lot of back and forth between feeling sorry for each other and getting mad at each other. When Anthony goes to an army training camp in the South, they both feel like they're getting away from each other. While Anthony is at the army base, he has an affair with Dorothy Raycroft. Almost as soon as he began the affair, though, he could only think about Gloria. Anthony can't be sent to war because he isn't a good soldier, but the war ends before he can be sent, and when he does, he returns to Gloria with a passion that soon goes back to its old, unhappy ways. Gloria's heart breaks when she finds out that she has waited too long to become an actress and is now too old to play a leading lady. Anthony can't keep a steady job or get any of his short stories published for money, and Gloria can feel her age creeping up on her. This, along with the fact that she's only 30, makes her feel like she has no future and might as well give up and die. The only thing that keeps her and Anthony going is the hope that, after enough appeals, their lawsuit to get Anthony's inheritance back might work. One night, 
Gloria suggested in a dramatic way that they move to Europe for three years and then just die. In response, Anthony started thinking of people who might be willing to lend them more money. Blokeman's name comes up, and Gloria tells Anthony that they can't borrow from him because he set up the screen test where she was told she looked too old to be a lead actress. Later that night, Anthony gets drunk and says he forgot his wallet because he doesn't have enough money to pay his bill. As he stumbles down the street, he runs into his best friend Maury Noble, who he hasn't seen in a long time. Anthony gets angry when even Maury tells him he can't ask for a loan, so he decides to talk to Blokeman. He finds him at a fancy club and fights with him there. Blokeman throws him out on the street in the end. A stranger puts him in a taxi, but the driver kicks him out because he doesn't have any money. Anthony stumbles home and thinks to himself that he doesn't feel drunk anymore, just crazy. In three weeks, the final decision of the lawsuit will be made public. Gloria goes with Dick to find out what it is, but Anthony stays behind to see if he will be saved or completely destroyed. He is surprised to see Dorothy, his mistress from the army training base, when the bell rings. She went to New York because she wanted to see Anthony. Anthony is usually drunk, so when Dorothy shows up out of the blue, he gets confused and angry. He tries to throw a chair at her, but falls down and passes out instead. When Gloria and Dick get back to the house with the great news that they won the lawsuit and don't have to worry about being homeless anymore, Anthony is lying on the bathroom floor, unable to talk, looking at his old stamp collection. The last scene of the book is told from the point of view of two people who see Anthony standing alone on a ship's dock. From what they have heard, Anthony's mind and body got worse after Shuttleworth killed himself and his inheritance money was taken away. Anthony gets the last line, which is an exclamation that he has finally won after a long fight with an enemy he only refers to as they. About the author. Fitzgerald was born in 1896 in S.A. Paul, Minnesota. He grew up in Buffalo, New York. Through his maternal grandfather's work in the grocery business, his family had just recently moved into high society. But Fitzgerald's father was a less successful businessman, and when he was out of work, it was hard for the family to keep up their social standing. Fitzgerald got into Princeton in 1913, even though his grades were not great and did not get better once he was there. In 1917, he quit Princeton to join the army. He was never sent anywhere, and he didn't like the disciplined life of an officer very much. Fitzgerald left the army in 1919. The next year, he got married to Zelda Sayer and his first book, This Side of Paradise, came out and was an instant hit. In 1921 and 1922, when Zelda was pregnant with their daughter Scotty, he wrote The Beautiful and Damned. By 1925, he had written four books, including The Great Gatsby. Even though they were well known, most of the books didn't sell well. Fitzgerald eventually tried writing for Hollywood, but he made most of his money by publishing short stories. Ernest Hemingway, who lived at the same time, didn't think that was a good thing for a literary artist to do. The Fitzgeralds split their time between New York and Paris. They tried to deal with their depression by spending a lot of money and having affairs with other people. Fitzgerald got more and more drunk as Zelda spent her later years in a mental hospital. At 44 years old, he had a heart attack that killed him. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.